Hello friends! Welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. My name is Leah. This is Homeschool at Heart and today we're going to be talking about sixth grade curriculum picks for the 2023-2024 school year. All right, you guys, uh, if you are new, I have three students. My oldest will be in middle school next year. So this video is for her curriculum. I also have a daughter going into fifth grade and another daughter going into third grade. All of my kids are getting so old, you guys. I can't believe it. This will be our eighth year homeschooling and we've been homeschooling since the very beginning with all three kids. We homeschool through a charter, and I think <laughs> that's all you guys need to know up front if you haven't watched a video of mine before. I would love it if you would uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel if you are looking for homeschool content. That is what we do here, and we'd love to have you. All right, so I'm going to jump right into these curriculum choices, so hopefully this video won't be too long. So we're going to talk about our five main subjects, which are Bible, history, science, math, and language arts. So for, we haven't had like a Bible curriculum yet. My kids do a WANA at our church and in the third through sixth grades, they have like a pretty good Bible study foundation with their WANA books. So Charlotte and I work on her verses for Sparks and my big kids have been in TNT, which has the Bible study already like kind of built into it for a few years now. And we have been doing family devotions in the mornings, but I felt like we were ready now that everybody is reading well, <laughs> that we could move on to something that was a little more meaty. So we're going to try this out and see how it goes. This is My Brother's Keeper, a biblical study on loving your siblings. This is by Not Consumed Ministries. And I heard about it through Ashley from Grace and Grit. That's her uh, YouTube channel. So this is the parent edition. And I will be doing this study right alongside my kids, which I love. And so that's a page from it. It also comes with stickers and a cute little bookmark with some scripture references on it um, and it also comes with these challenge cards so the challenges are pretty much the same for the adults and the kids this one says set up a time every week to pray with or for your siblings it has some ideas on there for how to pray pick one way to kindly serve a sibling for week of two and has some ideas and then there's a couple more idea, uh, our ideas for how to do kind things for or with your siblings there. So let me show you the page. I showed you day five, so I'll go ahead and show you day five for this one. This is the junior study. There's also a primary level that my third grader will do. This one is a little bit more writing intensive. This particular page doesn't look that way, but... Let me see if there's another example. So, so they have some lines to write on, some things that they could draw instead if they would rather draw than write, which is probably going to be the case for my middle schooler, but we'll see. It also comes with stickers and a bookmark, the same ones, I think. And then the junior level cards are set up a time every week to pray with your siblings. So I think they're kind of assuming that they live in the same house. So... If not, then four would work out well. Week two is make three service coupons for your sibling. So things you promise to do for them. And then there's some ideas. And then, there, you know, there's two other challenges as well. So that's what we're going to be doing for Bible. For math, we are going to go on to the next level of right start math. This year she's doing level E. Next year she'll be doing level F. She is my kid that really doesn't enjoy math. Like my middle child this year has decided that math isn't her favorite, but Beth has from the beginning struggled with math. So we have gone through three different, this is the third math curriculum that we've tried with Beth. And this is the only one that really has helped her and has caused us to not have a very tearful math time. <laughs> so we 
are with a charter school, so it's like not really a, an option for us to just like de-school math for however long like you can if you have a, a student that you're homeschooling independently. But we've tried Math and Focus, which is like Singapore math. We've tried Saxon math, and then we landed on Right Start math because I saw them at the Great Homeschool Convention. I'm a big proponent for going to homeschool conventions. There's several different ones. It doesn't have to be the Great Homeschool Convention. That's just the one that I have experience with. But we have had such a good time both years that we've gone, and I have learned so much. In fact, I learned about this because I went to a class, how to teach your student math if you feel like you're bad at it, which I do feel like I'm bad at math, guys, but I can teach this math. I, I actually haven't had trouble teaching math throughout the eight years. It's just, I want my child to not be miserable <laughs> doing math. So that's why. So we tried out several different, we did all of those math curriculums for a couple of years each. We didn't just like jump around with them. But if you wanna see more in depth talk about math curriculums and comparisons, I have a video, I'll link it below. It is a comparison of the math and focus, the right start math and the Saxon math. Um, and I compared like a similar concept so you could see how it teaches that same concept all three different ways. So. That is what we're doing for Right Start Math. I will say one more thing about Right Start Math is that it is not one that if you want to be hands off with it, this is not the math curriculum for you. This is very teacher led. So I sit with her from start to finish with almost every single lesson. There are review lessons in there and I let her do those by herself and then go back and correct anything that she didn't get right. But for the most part, we are doing math together every single day. Okay, so that's math. Language arts. I mentioned that we work with a charter school, so they re they have certain requirements that we have to meet. And one of the things is a reading program. I actually don't feel like my older two kids need this, but because we work with a charter school, we have to, <laughs> we have to do it. So this program is the one that we used this current school year. It is called Moving Beyond the Page. And we have tried a couple of different things that are like this, but don't have as many parts of language arts that they cover. So this one covers spelling and grammar and reading comprehension and writing. So if you wanted to use it as the full language arts package, that is totally a fine thing to do with it. But we also use IEW for writing. So I don't make my kids do the final project in any of these lessons because they are doing lots of essay writing. <laughs> so this is fulfilling a requirement through our school. So I will, you know, just upfront say that. So I only committed ourselves to two of these concepts or units or whatever they want to call it, but they look pretty fun for this age group. So what you have is they'll let you know what chapters to read of your book. So this one is The Wanderer, so it comes with this novel. And then it has discussion questions. I only made my kids do like three of these. It is a very rigorous curriculum, and so there's a lot that they think that you need to pack into your homeschool days. And we do not keep the same pace that they suggest in this book, but because there's a lot of activities. So like this lesson, chapter, section four of this has two, two activities and the reading. I don't know, some of them have up to like four and we're not gonna do that every single day. I just, I, I don't think that our school day needs to take that long, but they have different activities in here. So they have some crafts, they have like a worksheet that is teaching about predicate adjectives, direct objects, indirect objects. And up until this point, we, here's, you know, how to write about relationships and how they work together, different things like that. There are, here's a worksheet about modifiers, um, and it goes on and on. So we're doing The Wanderer. We're also doing a short stories collection. So it comes with this little tiny book and then also this shelf life book, which I will be trying to read 
these stories over the summer because I haven't, I don't think I've read any of these stories. I'm not familiar with them. So that is what we'll be doing for most of our language arts. And then for the writing part, we're going to be using IEW. This is our third year, well, Beth's third year of doing IEW, Structure and Style. So Structure and Style is the um, IEW curriculum that comes with um, either you can get Forever Streaming or you can get the DVDs. And we always get the DVDs. I just am not very techy, <laughs> so the DVDs make me feel a little bit more secure. So it comes with the DVDs and then it comes with this student notebook that has everything inside that you need for your student for the entire, I think it's 24 weeks that they'll be using it. And I say 24 weeks, but again, we do not go by week. We just go by assignment. So I have my kids, the video is about an hour long. Um, up until this point, I've had my kids just watch like 20 minutes at a time. So it takes them um, a few days to watch the lessons and they're doing like if they make them do like a keyword outline, which if you don't know is they read the source text and then they will write an outline, but they'll only write three words per sentence so that when they go to rewrite that into an essay, they don't plagiarize because they only, they need to use their own words to rearrange those, those three important words into the sentence so that they can keep the flow of the paragraph. And then they move on to things like creative writing and, and such. But it's a really simple concept, except that it has revolutionized my kids' writing. And then he also builds on that by adding parts of speech in as they go. So like they'll add adverbs, which are like L-Y words, and they'll add, um, I can't think of any other. <laughs> they talk about L-Y words all the time. He has certain words that he bans because he doesn't want them to use like things that are, you know, kind of feel like cop out words that you hear all the time that he wants them to come up with creative words and creative ways to explain what they're talking about and things like that. So totally appreciate Andrew Pudawa and IEW. You guys also, he comes to the great homeschool convention, which I've mentioned before in this video. And he's wonderful just as a person, just to talk to him. And last year I brought my kids with me to the convention and it was, just the best experience to let them talk to him and he like they brought him their essays that they had written and he read them and like we saw him again the next day and he like remembered them and remembered their essays and it he discussed it with them it was it was awesome I loved it so much that we are bringing the kids back this year so that they can um, see some of the people that they know from their curriculum or from reading or whatever, because also super exciting. Sam Smith, SD Smith from the Green Ember series is gonna be there too. So we have met him once before, but it's gonna be really exciting for the kids to get to talk to him now that they've read all of his books. So, um, okay, so moving on to history. So history and science guys are where my heart is. I love teaching these subjects. I don't know about you, but it's exciting. What we're gonna be using is, we used Beautiful Feet curriculum for California history this year for the first time, and we have loved it. So we decided to go ahead and start on early American history. My kids have been studying up until this past year when we started California history. We've been doing world history, and um, we haven't done any, like, American history. So we're going to go ahead and get going on American history. This one is the intermediate one because I'll have a third grader, uh, fifth grader and sixth grader. So I am going to use the intermediate instead of the primary, I think is what they call it. But uh, it's basically covering the same thing. It's just using longer books for bigger kids. So because all of my kids have a pretty good attention span when it comes to read alouds, this is going to work just fine. And then I'll show you what I'm going to add for my uh, middle schooler. So this book is the guide. It's really small, but it contains just like the discussion questions and lessons. 
of things to talk about with your students as you're going on through the suggested uh, the suggested literature. So it has, and I had to buy the guide, guys. My charter school would not pay for this because there's um, scripture verses inside of it. So there's the child's first book of American history. And I'm assuming that we're just going to read little excerpts of that as we go along. Uh, we're going to talk about the Vikings, Columbus, Pocahontas, William Bradford, the Pilgrims, Ben Franklin, Amos Fortune, Paul Revere, George Washington, Sacagawea or Sacagawea. Who knows how that, how that's pronounced. I would love to know because I'm going to have to read a whole book about her. Um, Lewis and Clark, Abe Lincoln, Harriet Tubman, Sojourner Truth. And then there's some additional resources um, that are like the Winter of Valley Forge, the Erie Canal, more about George Washington, and then a book about John James Audubon, which will be cool. So just so you can see what it looks like, this is the inside of the guide. So we'll read the books. We'll do the discussion. There's um, some notebooking that we'll be doing. And then for my middle schooler, what I'm going to do is add some additional reading. And I'm going to, it's going to be these. So it's going to be the Heroes of History books. We've read several of these this year and have loved them all. They've been so great. So she probably won't read Harriet Tubman again because we read this aloud this year. It was one of our favorite read alouds. I'm just saying. But here's what they look like on the inside. They are Heroes of History from Youth with a Mission Publishing. So YWAM. Anyway, I'll link it below because I'm not exactly sure what the website is. Anyway, these are all excellent, you guys. They have missionary stories, but they also have this Heroes of History series, and we love both. We will continue reading missionary stories next year, but then I'll have Beth read um, the Heroes of History. Ellie might also choose to do that, but it's not going to be something I require. That's what we're going to do for history for my middle schooler. And then finally, let's talk about science, which is actually my very favorite subject. A couple of years ago, we were doing, everybody had their own, well, Beth and Ellie are only one year apart, one grade apart, one year apart in age. And so I've always done their subjects like um, history and science together and just separated their reading and math. Now they do reading, uh, they do the same reading too because they're at the same reading level. They're a little bit different levels for writing and obviously their math is separate. I was having to do separate science for Charlotte and separate science for the big kids. And it was kind of, I just, I felt like, why are we doing this? <laughs> it was taking so much longer. It was, you know, while my younger child enjoys the one-on-one -on -one time, I felt like I was just like rushing through it all to get everything done every week. So I wanted to just really be able to sit in it and enjoy it. So I was like, I'm going to find something that's like more unit study ish so that we can do it all together. We couldn't use the good and the beautiful, which is what I originally had wanted to use because it's a Christian curriculum and so many of their science units are faith based. So I was looking for an alternative to that that was um, more neutral. But what I found was Harbor and Sprout, which is neutral. It is neither Christian nor non-Christian. And you guys, we have been using it all this year. It is so good. So I loved them so much that I became one of their affiliates here on YouTube. So if you go to the description box of this video, you can click on the link and anything you buy in their store, you can get 10% off using my, uh, my link. It's a subscription based service, but you can buy everything individually. If you would like, you just get an additional savings. They also started the Curio membership um, just recently, and I'm not a member of that because it was like the end of the school year and the school pays for our subscription. So I didn't really want to start anything new right now, but I probably will sign up for it using funds at the beginning of the school year. So I don't really have answers to questions about that yet, but I am planning to. So if you want, I have tons of videos about Harbor and Sprout um, for elementary units. 
come on this channel. And if you look in the previous uh, curriculum videos that I made the last couple of weeks, you can see the elementary units, but I'm going to talk right now about their secondary units, which they just started putting out. And I'm so excited about because I really, guys, I was so like torn about this because I really just wanted to keep using Harbor and Sprout, even though my child was going to go into middle school and was like technically beyond this. But I felt like even the elementary units go so deep that it would have totally worked out fine for middle school, but because they label them as through elementary school, I didn't know if my school was going to take it. But just in the nick of time, they came out with these beautiful secondary units. So let's check this out really quick. Okay, so they made these. It's typically a printable curriculum for Harbor and Sprouts um, units, but they made this so that you don't have to print it. It's There's not a bunch of consumables in the secondary units. So you do get a lot of really visually appealing pages though. They are all almost all black and white. I think that they're, you know, attempting to be edgy or something with that, but there are some color pages. So this is the botany unit. So I'll get the elementary botany and I'll get the secondary, well, this is a sample of the secondary botany unit. So I'll have to get the whole unit, but you can see that there's a lot more text per page. It does go into a little bit more in depth. So, you know, my little kids are probably going to hear a lot more about botany than they might have if, so here's some uh, vocabulary words here. They might, they might get a lot more in depth discussion with this than they normally would have, but we will also get some consumables with the elementary units. And then there are also projects to complete for the secondary units. So she'll have to do some notebooking and um, maybe a few more experiments. I'm not entirely sure because I, this first, the, the sample part of the secondary units didn't include that for this particular topic. So so that is everything that I have chosen so far for my middle schooler for the 2023-2024 school year. I will probably be gathering some more supplemental items over the summer, some books for her to read and such, but this is a really good foundation of what we will be learning for next year. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you. If there's anything that uh, looks especially exciting. I would love to hear about it in the comments or if you have anything really cool, like any ideas for things to supplement this curriculum, that would be also really great. I would love to hear all about it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video. All right, you guys. So let me tell you, about my week. So if you are new to this channel, um, at the end of all of my videos, I typically tell a little bit more about myself, either like a funny story or just like a life update on our family, just because I feel like it's so hard to try to establish a YouTube channel, but also like, feel like you can like just kind of let people get to know you through your videos um, at this stage that I'm at right now. I have about 710 subscribers. Um, YouTube isn't really, a YouTube channel isn't really established until you hit that thousand mark. And uh, I need to up my watch hours um, before that too. And I noticed that a lot of my videos, if I talk about just like our family life, people don't watch them. <laughs> so um, I started adding this content at the end of the videos. So that's a little bit of explanation about what I'm doing right now. Um, okay, so this week, this is how, this is who I am right now, you guys. I feel like I'm just like running from thing to thing to thing all the time. So we got back from a trip to um, Lake Isabella, California. We live in Southern California and um, went for spring break on 
um, well, like a late spring break, break vacation. So it was really restful. Hopefully soon I will put up a video about it. It'll probably be a bonus video because like I said, people don't seem like they respond super well when I just post videos about our lives in general. <laughs> Nobody wants to know, um, which is fine. But um, anyway, so we got back. Then I went to a uh, rehearsal the next day um, for a show at the, th at the local community theater that we volunteer at. Um, I was reading for a part for somebody who couldn't be there. And um, it was like one of their final rehearsals before their show is actually tonight. Um, so I get there and I like do the thing that I'm supposed to do. And then I can't find my phone. Um, so I'm like looking through my purse and I, you know, my watch had been pinging notifications the entire rehearsal. And I was like, I don't, I don't know where my phone is. I had a microphone in my pocket. My microphone pack, it looks sort of like phone shaped, but, um, it wasn't my phone because I was going to turn it off, <laughs> um, during the rehearsal. And then I go and I look through my purse and I'm like, it must be in my car. Cause the car was like, not that far from where we were in the theater. I thought, well, it seems reasonable that it would still be in range. But when I went outside to check, then my watch was saying you're out of range from your phone. So I was like, I don't know. So I caught the general manager really quickly and he, very kindly went back inside with me. We looked everywhere, everywhere that I had been like under all the theater seats. We went into the room that I had gotten my microphone from. We like, we scoured all of the places. I thought that I had heard it make a noise at one point, but I must've, it must've just been my watch making the noise. I don't know where that came from because I was like, you know, explaining to him like, I was getting notifications while we were running the show. Anyway, so it was, it was insane. So finally we gave up and he's like, I gotta go home. Um, can we come back and look for it tomorrow if you don't find it before then? Uh, it wasn't in my car. It wasn't in my purse. I was like, fine, that's fine. I, you know, like not upset or anything. I was just like, no, that's a good idea. We'll just, we'll start fresh tomorrow. I'll go home. I'll check my like find my phone thing on my computer and see if I can figure out where it is. <gasps> I was baffled. I couldn't figure it out anyway. So I go home and my phone was on the charger at home, you guys. And so what had happened was, I don't know why, but my watch like somehow connected with the Wi-Fi at the theater, which is so weird because I couldn't get my computer to connect to the Wi-Fi. I don't know. I don't know what happened. It was so weird. I, this is how, like I was talking about earlier, like I'm not good at techno technology. This is why I buy the, the, <laughs> the DVDs instead of doing the streaming for IEW. <laughs> anyway, so this is where my life is. I can't like, I feel like I have no brain cells left. So I did text all the people who are helping me look for my phone. <laughs> Clearly I have it now because it's right here, but, um, that is who I am in real life. So hopefully that was funny or at least mildly entertaining. <laughs> so anyway, if you come back to my channel next week, I will be talking about my homeschool mom must haves for, um, this year. Uh, and I am looking forward to that. So I will see you guys in my next one.